Hello everybody, and thanks for watching. My name is Damon Rosen, and I've got a real treat for you today. Thanks to the magic of Facebook Live, I am able to present to you internationally known anti-Semite, BDS activist, civil rights, and Muslim rights activist, someone I affectionately refer to as Lion Sewer Whore, please welcome Linda Sarsour. Hello, Linda. Oh, my goodness gracious. I'd like to take this opportunity to touch on a few topics with you. Uh, first, the 2016 presidential election, the upcoming 2018 congressional elections, and what you think the chances of your progressive movement are in gaining some seats in the House and Senate, as well as a couple of other topics. Linda, we both know you don't like Jews, so I found it particularly interesting, your embrace of Bernie Sanders in the 2016 Democratic primaries. I was a Bernie Sanders supporter during the primaries. That's why I believed in that campaign. I believed in the people on that campaign. And then after the Democratic Party screwed Bernie out of the nomination, you jumped ship and joined Hillary Clinton's campaign. Is that correct? My candidate lost the primaries. I personally went to work on the Hillary Clinton campaign. I went to places like Ohio. You know why? Because I wasn't voting for Hillary Clinton because of my own personal views. I was voting for Hillary Clinton and working for Hillary Clinton because I was thinking about black people. I was thinking about undocumented people and immigration, immigration reform issues. I was thinking about things like potential Muslim bans and all these issues. I didn't think that Hillary was going to be a perfect president for our nation, but I knew sure damn well she was not going to be Donald Trump and the kind of cronies and Islamophobes and anti-Semites she brought into the White House. And Linda, how do you feel about President Trump? We have a misogynist, sexist in the White House. Our president is an absolute disgrace, and he's supposed to be acting on our behalf. This administration said Muslim ban, we're going to do a Muslim ban. They started out with seven countries, they went to six countries, now we're at eight countries. If you stay silent, what's to say it won't be 14 countries, or 25 countries, or 40 countries? 40? Linda, honestly, I say go for all 56 Muslim-majority countries. The Muslim ban is ludicrous and outrageous. You mean travel ban? Muslim ban. It's not a Muslim ban. It's a travel ban. Under an administration like this one, there's no saying what they're capable of. We talk a lot about mass deportations, but people forget history. There was a moment that reached that we were able to round up people on this U.S. soil and put them in concentration camps. Japanese internment. And let me talk a little bit about Japanese internment for a second because I keep bringing this up over and over again because what's to say that something like that could not happen again? Uh, Linda, you are aware of the difference between a Japanese internment camp and a Nazi concentration camp where millions of Jews were exterminated? you got to think about what you're saying before you say it. We were able to go around and literally snatch up Japanese American families and their children God, remember what country you live in. You live in a country that even took children and put them into camps with their families. Linda, you're a relatively educated person. Are you familiar with an event known as Pearl Harbor? What is going to happen the day that some military operation happens where we're rounding up undocumented immigrants or we're rounding up Muslims in this country? Linda, no one in the Trump administration has recommended rounding up Muslims, have they? Outrageous. I'm just so outraged. Linda, some people have said that you don't only hate Israel, but you actually don't particularly care for the United States either. Would you care to expound upon that? Outrageous. Like, we should all be ashamed of ourselves right now. There are really outrageous things that are happening on our watch, and it scares me so much when I think about the history of our country and the amount of times that really horrible things have happened. And, and the fact that we have been taught in this country this idea of individualism, that it's all about us, every man for himself. This is not the kind of country that I want to live in. And I'm grateful to be a Palestinian and to have grown up with this village mentality that we are all responsible for those who are around us. Linda, there's no such thing as Palestine. You know, I'm Arab, so I you can call me a conspiracy theorist, the U.S. government just came up with a new term, black extremist groups, as a way to criminalize and do basically cointel pro. People can argue it's 2.0 or 3.0, and we're just sitting back and allowing these things to happen on our watches. And then one day, black activists across this country who are engaging in liberation work, fighting for us on the front lines, are going to be snatched up, justified because of some God knows what 
person is creating some analysis that these groups are hate groups and that they are violent groups in this country. Wake up! You oftentimes speak about white supremacists, neo-Nazis. For you to imply that there's no such thing as black extremist groups makes you a little bit of a racist. This is the kind of outrageous shit that we're talking about in our country when there are actually people around us who are dying. So looking forward to 2018, are you feeling confident in your progressive movement's ability to seize some power from the Republicans? We in the progressive left got to get our shit together. I'm just going to say it like that. I don't usually use curse words because I got imams and young people on my, on my uh, Facebook. The progressive left is eating itself alive. So if the progressive left thinks that we're going to have a shot in 2018, well, you better get your house in order because your house is in shambles right now. Undocumented people are the priorities. Muslims are the priority for us. LGBTQIA communities. Linda, don't you find it the least bit ironic that you have embraced the LGBT movement when in Muslim-majority countries, gays are murdered and imprisoned for their homosexual activity? First of all, it's outrageous just in of, it, of itself. But what's to say that because you were silent on LGBTQIA communities being legally discriminated against, what makes me think that you're going to be vocal about Muslims being discriminated against? Linda, I'm sure you've seen some of the videos of homosexuals being tossed off of rooftops in your beloved Gaza Strip, no? Jeff Sessions just basically made it legal for employers to discriminate against people who are LGBTQIA. Well, Linda, thanks for joining us, and I hope we could do this again sometime. Assalamu alaikum. Asamakalehem to you. Shalom.